Hello everyone, good afternoon and thank you for being here again this afternoon. Today we have the second seminar of this Michael Mas term and we are pleased to welcome Dr. Ebele Madueke. Uh, she is uh, alumni from the um, Technical University of Munich and she will be sharing her paper that was recently published at Social Indicators Research uh, about measuring human recognition for women in Malawi using the AF method for multidimensional poverty counting. Uh, Dr. Ebele Madueque uh, holds a doctorate degree from the uh, Technical University of Munich. She also holds a, a master in science degree in life science economics and policy from the same university. Uh, her main research area includes sustainable development, uh, poverty, well-being, and resource economics through economic recognition. Um, without further uh, presentation, uh, I just want to say that this is a very interesting topic and uh, it's interesting in, in many domains. Uh, I will not say too much. Uh, I will just simply uh, add a few general um, indications regarding the presentation. So as you know, this is the, the, the this seminar is gonna be, uh, it's gonna take place um, in this platform, which implies that we will be happy to receive all your presentations, or all your questions or comments uh, through the chat that is being active uh, from, from now on. Um, secondly, uh, just to mention that this presentation is going to be recorded and we will be uh, make it available uh, for in, in, in our OFI website. And the third comment I want to say is that the presentation will go for 40 minutes first and then we will have uh, around 20 minutes for, for questions and answers. Um, so that would be it and I'm happy to uh, turn to Dr. Ebele Madueque for her presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Moreno, for the wonderful um, introduction. Um, I will start um, with my presentation. Um, today, I would like to present uh, a research or a part of my uh, research um, that I did when I was with the Technical University of Munich. Um, this research is um, measuring the, the level of human recognition for women in Malawi using the Aikaya Foster method of multidimensional counting. Um, human recognition here is referring to one of the intangible concepts of human development and also is quite uh, relevant to overall uh, poverty studies. Um, but um, as of up until recent times, certain intangible, these intangible concepts of human development has not been really looked into or really uh, included overall in, in, in examining overall well-being and poverty. So with no further ado, I will start to introduce the framework of human recognition. In this concept or in this scenario, um, we define human recognition or human recognition is, uh, involves the identification and, and acknowledgement of individuals to have inherent value. Um, and this concept um, has been with us actually uh, in, in social sciences and also in economics, but uh, as of recent has no, um, has no research supporting the economic impact of such an intang intangible concept of human development on, uh, for people overall. Um, so this also is defined by Kasselman in his uh, uh, 2013 paper to include the, or to address the extent to which individuals are seen to have inherent value by virtue of being a human being. So what does that mean in, in the society or in the structure that we have as a society? Human recognition flows through the structural or the institutional and the social structures that we have in the society based on the way we interact, interact with people in our spheres of a public and private uh, domain. Um, human recognition, uh, just like any other um, concept of development, um, is quantifiable and also involves um, some baseline definitions. So here, um, we, we um, argue that the amount of human recognition a person receives um, depends on how society recognizes their basic rights and needs to be 
to exist and to be of consequence to the, in their sphere of interaction, either in the public and uh, in the private sphere. So linking this concept of human recognition as an intangible concept of human uh, well-being to human development, um, and it's connected to certain social indicators like unemployment, education, of course, gender, migration, immigrants, the way um, um, people from other locations uh, of the world are treated, the way people that have different education levels are treated, disability and social background, and so forth and so on. And its link also to human development is seen um, as a form of, of uh, as a negative, as having effect on social relationship, um, especially if it involves um, denial of rights, denial of dignity, so indignity, and also uh, the ability to support people and the ability to work without shame, which are one of some of the intangible concepts of human development that has been also identified by OFI as contributing to overall deprivation and poverty. Um, in Malawi, human recognition for women um, has inherent value in its effect on poverty and reduction of inequality and human development to improving access rights or property rights for women and to its uh, influence, uh, for example, on um, access to productive resources. So when women in the society, for example, or human beings are recognized as humans and having equal rights or be being viewed on the same level as um, having equal rights as human beings, these, this affects their social well-being, their self-esteem, and um, the ability to provide or contribute to the overall shared agenda of the societal development. And just like every uh, model or every um, concept of development, it can be positive or negative, and it's quite instrumental to well-being through its direct and indirect impact on material outcomes that we see like income, education, nutrition, and also its influence on the actions of recipients and providers. So there is a negative and positive feedback loop when human beings provide recognition to one another, whether positive recognition or negative recognition. Um, this provision of human recognition here, I will uh, split into two because quite like uh, so many economic terms, there is the cost and benefit of providing recognition. There is also the cost and benefit of receiving recognition. Um, for the purpose of this presentation, we will completely focus on the cost and benefit of recognition reception uh, because the provision of recognition within, um, within the society is um, very difficult to quantify. So providers may or may not be acting um, on their with benefit or profit maximization when they provide positive or negative recognition. But the deprivation uh, side of it in its reception can be measured through the interaction of the people that are affected with this recognition provision within the society. For example, if there are rules depriving certain people from owning from acquiring certain resources or from participating in certain community engagements or from or, or dehumanizing this uh, group of people, then this kind of rules or this kind of interaction can really be quantified on the reception level and not so much on the provision level if the infrastructure um, or if the provider is an agent which individuals do not have big influence all over. And like I pre previously mentioned, um, the concept of human recognition in involves benefit and it involves cost. And the receptor also incurs benefit when they receive positive recognition. And they also incur costs when they also receive such a positive recognition. Um, in the last decades, like I previously mentioned, uh, poverty research has expanded really to include intangible concepts of human development. So we do, do not only focus on monetary poverty, but also other forms of intangible concept of poverty, like well-being, uh, quality of life, um, respect, dignity, social, um, the, the social capital, and so on. Um, focusing on women, for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, and most especially Malawi, as the engine of development and for countries, these countries that are really 
uh, focus as uh, in agriculture, as agriculture being the main resource of development, it is easy to extract human recognition and its influence on resource access or on the levels of property rights that these women have um, in these countries, and then check this or compare this with the level of poverty that is available or inequality that is available in these countries. Um, Castleman in its, in its two, uh, 2016 paper identified human recognition as one of the intangible concepts of poverty and human development and is uh, isolated three sources where human recognition can be can occur, um, both positive and negative. So the three sources include in the self domain, which is um, connected to autonomy, choice and power agency in the household domain, which is connected to the interpersonal approaches or reactions um, within the household, which is a freedom, respect, and sometimes direct and indirect violence occurring within the household domain, and also within the community domain, the social approaches that are available within the community, the empowerment that are available for affected individuals within the community, and also the structural or institutional violence um, that are occurring within the community domain. And then using these domains, um, measuring human recognition really requires a methodology that can capture the incidence of human recognition deprivation or negative human recognition, such as indignity, humiliation, or violence across the three uh, domains. So for this research, um, we needed to isolate the isolate the indicative measures of human recognition, in this case, negative human recognition within the self, household, and community domain. And then using the ICAR Foster method, estimate the index of negative human recognition for women and women who work in agriculture. So we are quite uh, familiar with the, with the methodology uh, de developed by Sabina Aika and James Foster and used to measure the multidimensional poverty index like we saw from last week. Um, and this methodology then ha has special properties that allows for within and across domain estimation and within group decomposability. Um, for this particular research, we isolated indicators of violence, humiliation, dehumanization, and lack of autonomy clustered within the three domains, which are the self, household, and the community domain occurring for uh, the women in this, uh, in this research. Then the next level was to set for each indicator a set threshold ab above which individuals are seen as deprived of human recognition that is lacking human recognition, quite similar to the measurement of the poverty index. Um, and then calculate the total deprivation scores above which um, within the weighted domains, individuals are seen also as, de as deprived within the domain scores. So this is, nothing has changed within the methodology um, um, used. Um, the application of the Akea Foster method allowed us to uh, set up such a structure with the decomposability, being able to calculate domain scores and being able to calculate for each individual um, the weighted score of their negative human recognition or human recognition deprivation. Um, the baseline, uh, just like the Akea Foster method, is made up of the, um, the headcount ratio and the um, deprivation intensity. Um, the deprivation intensity, uh, the headcount ratio takes into account the number of dep deprived individual over the total number of individuals um, in the sample and the, where the deprived individuals are calculated based on the within and across, uh, within domain deprivation, uh, within the domain uh, cutoff. The intensity um, is then also, or the deprivation intensity is calculated quite similar to the multidimensional poverty index, um, taking account the degree of deprivation or the breadth of deprivation within, this, within the domains or and across domains. Um, so as an example, we isolated for the human recognition um, deprivation index or for the human recognition measurement, 21 indicators clustered within three domains, the self, the household, and the community domain. Setting the threshold to one third, that is the 33%, just like the MPI has been set, 
Um, we uh, developed an example here where we see the eight indicators within the self domain, looking at the lack of self autonomy, the mental justification of violence, um, the household domain consisting of 11 indicators looking at the lack of freedom for women, the presence of physical violence, and actually also the presence of sexual violence within the household. And then the community domains that looks at the presence of violence within the community and the presence of violence against the women within the community when they're pregnant. And so the premise is quite, um, um, quite uh, simple or not very complicated. Each domain receives one third of the weightings and within each domain, if a respondent or um, a woman scores, for example, uh, is deprived in four of the indicators, receives a weight or a score of 0.16 um, in the, in the self-domain, in the household domain with eight indicators, a score of 0.24, and a combination of these two scores, for example, would um, end up at 0.4, which is 40% and is indeed deprived in two um, domains, so multiple dimensions or multiple domains. Um, we use the Malawi DHS uh, to isolate um, this, the indicators that are used in the calculation of the human, negative human recognition or the human recognition deprivation index. Um, for 2014, 2010, and 2015 data collected for women across Malawi and also including data for women, uh, for women farmers. So we isolated, like I previously said, three domains, the self, the household, and the community domain. Within the self-domain, we cluster the lack of autonomy and the mental justification of violence. So these questions come from the um, conflict tactic scale, which is administered for women in the survey that has, part, um, which includes the, uh, the model for domestic violence. So a person, uh, a woman uh, is, set to one or the response of the of the woman is set to one if for example in the lack of autonomy domain she indicates that it's someone else that makes a decision for her for her health care or decides for the visit to her family or within uh, or household purchases where she is responsible for or uh, also set to one if she um justifies that of course a woman deserves to be um beat physically assaulted if she goes out without informing her spouse neglects her children argues with her partner or spouse or refuses to engage in sexual intercourse with her spouse and so on then within the household domain we have two sources that integrate the interaction within the household with regards to freedom and the incidence of physical and sexual violence so here um, we look at the indicators that um, isolate if the woman has received um, some sort of physical or emotional or sexual violence from the partner or spouse, um, depending on different uh, criteria. So one is jealousy, the other is unfaithfulness, the next is visit, visit with friends, contact with family, and also um, going out without informing the partner or spouse. And then, of course, with the sexual and physical violence is physical act of violence, humiliation, um, threatening, causing harm, like kicking, dragging, strangling, burning, or cutting with a knife or another weapon, physical force of unwanted sexual act, or physical force of performance of sexual act to another person, uh, as well as physical manifestations of um, violence, like bruises, eye injuries, sprains, dislocation, or burns. And then in the community here, we isolate incidences of humiliation or physical violence where um, the woman has received uh, violence from someone that is not within the household. So a very, a completely random community member or um, in, a, in a place where um, the woman doesn't know this person or this person's a complete stranger, like an attack outside of the household. Um, so after we have isolated uh, the, the indicators, we also did a summary statistics of the distribution uh, of the age of the women in the data set for the Malawi DHS for the three years because uh, we're using a pooled cross-sectional data set. Um, looking at the distribution, most of the women respondents, more or less for the Mar Malawi DHS, is really ranging between 15 uh, years old to 
uh, 49, I think, and the average age uh, distribution is between 29 and 30, 32 years of age for the three, um, for the three uh, timelines uh, that are pulled together. Um, it's also important to note the distribution of the split of Malawi between three regions, the northern, the central and southern region. And this is really important when we talk about the decomposability of the measure of the human recognition deprivation measure and the uh, degree of deprivation being experienced by women overall and also women farmers uh, living in these regions overall in Malawi using the Malawi DHS. So we set, we pulled the Malawi DHS for 20, 2004, 10 and 15 together containing data from women only and also data from women farmers and set the within and across domain threshold to one third, 33%, just like the, uh, the multidimensional poverty index. And then there we calculated from this, the human recognition deprivation index, the human recognition head count ratio and the human recognition deprivation intensity. Um, we found that 16% using the threshold of one third, 16% of the women uh, in Malawi in our data set are human recognition deprived with intensity of up to 43%. Um, in comparison with the average OFI MPI uh, that was calculated also for Malawi for these three timelines, um, we saw really a high um, head count ratio and also a very high deprivation intensity. But um, for the OFI, the index is higher because of course um, it's multidimensional poverty and human recognition is an intangible concept that is just being piloted with the study at the moment. Um, decomposing the index by subgroup of women that work for agriculture and outside agriculture, um, we identified that women that work in agriculture are uh, the headcount ratio at 17% compared to outside agriculture, which is 15%. And the deprivation intensity is up to for women working in agriculture, 43%, and for women not in agriculture, also up to 43% for women uh, for the human recognition index. Um, plotting the um, the different um, set off across domains. So we set up different cutoffs across domain to check the robustness of the cutoff that we have picked as one third um, and to check also the result of the multidimensional negative human recognition index, the health count ratio and the deprivation intensity across, across all this uh, domain cutoff, one for 0 0.2, so 20%, one as one third, that's 3%. Uh, the other as fifth, at 50%, 66 and 0.8, 80%. Of course, this is quite similar with the MPI index. So the higher the deprivation uh, or deprivation intensity, the lower the headcount ratio. And overall, we see that the index um, reduces, but in, in relationship or in linear relationship with the higher deprivation ratio. So for example, as at intensity, deprivation intensity of 84, we have almost uh, almost no uh, headcount percentage and almost no um, human recognition deprivation uh, index score. But at, for example, um, deprivation intensity of 0 0.435, we have the headcount ratio of 16 and the index of 0 0.071 at 0 0.33 uh, as the cutoff. The next thing we did was to um, decompose the, the next thing we did was to decompose the contribution of the different domains um, to the final recognition score. So from the household at uh, the self and the community domain, we can isolate that the self and the household domain contributes more to the negative human recognition score of the women in Malawi. So this means that the contribution of the lack of autonomy, mental justification of violence, freedom, and incidence of physical and sexual violence in the household contributes more to the human recognition deprivation of women in Malawi overall, and also women who work in uh, who work in agriculture in comparison to women who work outside of agriculture. Then we set um, 
an average score and calculated the distribution of the negative human recognition scores, which are calculated for the women in Malawi across the different districts of Malawi. So Malawi is made up of about 20, 28 districts um, in three regions. And we isolated for each district an average calculation between within the three timelines that were calculated and also a total average using the pooled cross-sectional data. So, um, and we were able to note that, for example, for women that are located in the Northern District of Malawi, um, they have a higher negative human recognition scores compared to women in the Central and in the Southern Districts of Malawi. So um, the Northern region of Malawi um, overall have a higher deprivation uh, level compared to the Central and the Southern um, districts or regions of Malawi. The next thing that was calculated was then to use adjusted weights to measure within the self domain and the household domain. What happens when policymakers, for example, investigating this intangible concept of human development decides to place more weight on one domain as opposed to the other. So, for example, we place more weights on the self domain to see how this would affect the overall um, headcount ratio, the intensity and the index in and as compared to the household domain um, uh, overall. So our results show that within the self domain placing a more a higher weighting for the self domain overall and using the union identification to isolate the lowest, the two intermediate cases of 50 and 75%. Um, more weighting on the self-domain, uh, the health country ratio for the women in Malawi uh, at 44% with in deprivation intensity of 0.35 compared to the household domain where the head count ratio at the union level is a bit lower and the deprivation um, intensity is slightly uh, also higher. So overall here, we were able to identify really that when um, a higher weight is placed on the self-domain and a higher weight is also placed on the household domain, the difference between the headcount ratio and the deprivation intensity um, is not uh, very extreme, so to say, um, for the two, for the union identification and also for the intermediate cases of uh, the identification at, um, uh, at 50%, so to say. Next. Um, we took advantage of the decomposability of the ICAR foster method to check or to isolate um, across different um, domain cutoff, the spatial uh, decomposition, so the regional split for Malawi for the index and also the occupational split. So we looked at women that work in agriculture and women that do not work in agriculture. And then we also split this up by women uh, located in the three regions of Malawi, the North, the South, and the Central. Um, and from our results, we saw that the women that work in agriculture and women that are located in Northern part of Malawi have a higher negative human recognition scores as opposed to women that do not work in agriculture and women located in the Central and Southern part of Malawi. So this basically um, here tells us that for the, for the overall score using these indicators of violence, humiliation, and lack of autonomy. This is higher for women that are working in agriculture when you compare this uh, to women that do not work in agriculture. And also it's higher for women located in the Northern part of Malawi as opposed to the Central and the Southern part of Malawi. Then we looked at um, the distribution of the ethnicity um, located in these regions. So as, as previously mentioned, we isolated, okay, the people in the northern part of Malawi have a higher deprivation score. But why is this the case um, that they have a higher deprivation score as opposed to the women in the southern or, um, in, the, or in the central part of Malawi? Um, it's also here important to note that the ethnicity in Malawi varies a lot as opposed to other um, countries or well-known um, patterns of inheritance that are, that are available. Um, Malawi has a patrilineal and matrilineal system of inheritance, where in the patrilineal, the, the resources are passed on from the father to the son. 
And in the matrilineal, the resources are passed on from the mother to the daughter. So looking at the distribution of negative human recognition across ethnicity line, we're able to identify that there are higher deprivation, so higher incident of violence, humiliation, and lack of autonomy when the region or the district is located in an area with ethnicity that are predominantly patrilineal as opposed to predominantly matrilineal um, ethnicities. Um, there are also um, areas that have mixed um, um, ethnicity. They practice both patrilineal and matrilineal depending on the type of marital agreement that is existing between the women and their spouse or the partners. Uh, but the mixed ethnicities also have a mixed result. So from the southern and the central part of Malawi are mostly uh, a little bit more predominantly matrilineal as opposed to the northern part of Malawi, which is predominantly patrilineal. Then the last thing we did was then to compare the final um, result of our human recognition deprivation scores, the distribution of the scores with the poverty data derived from the living standard measurement uh, survey for 2010. Um, Bear yeah, in mind that the poverty data, we have not um, adjusted or altered any of it. And this is really picked from the, from the market, from the project assessing the potential market available for the purchase or the sales of hybrid um, energy systems in Malawi and sponsored by the Scottish government. So taking only the, the poverty data distribution for 2010 for Malawi, and comparing this for the poverty data distribution, uh, comparing this for the human recognition uh, data distribution for 2010 for Malawi, uh, we see an overlap uh, between the region with a higher level of human recognition deprivation for women and the level of poverty that is, avail that, uh, is available in this area. Um, this is using only the poverty indicator that looks at uh, $2, people living under $2 uh, per day in Malawi. Um, we have not been able to um, set this map to compare with the OFI um, MPI indicators for um, poverty distribution for Malawi for 2010 or for the three years uh, available because of the difference in the regional um, um, plots or regional distribution, so to say. But here, the idea is only to see um, if this is visually visible when we compare the poverty data for Malawi for 2010 to the human recognition deprivation scores that we have extracted from the Malawi DHS from 2010 um, and to see if there is indeed a pattern between poverty or inequality and negative human recognition. And um, yes, indeed, there is. So in conclusion, um, human recognition is a significant concept of human development and of course it's instrumental to improving uh, human uh, well-being because when human beings are not recognized or if there is social exclusion existing within the society, um, those individuals are not able to fulfill their full potential both um, economic and socially. Um, measuring intangible concepts like human recognition is quite challenging, that is true. Um, but the ICAR Foster method provides a way of uh, developing an in-depth analysis and a robust measure to compare such an intangible concept of development. It also provides the possibility of decomposing across measures and across subgroups to provide insights that are needed to look at the depth and breadth of deprivations, especially in, for intangible, um, intangible uh, measures of, of inequality and of human development. Um, another advantage is that it could be also be applied to other countries to highlight, for example, negative human recognition or human recognition deprivation levels for all individuals or women and address these deficiencies appropriately. So we have been able to apply the ICAR Foster method to extract again the negative human recognition levels for women in Peru um, and to identify what are the social, economic, and social demographic factors that identify a person as human recognition deprived. Then um, 
using this decomposability, one can also provide targeted or specific domains or subpopulation of individuals, and in our case, women, with programs that aim at improving, in our case, negative human recognition or human recognition levels. For, for example, social policies or programs that target and improve um, within those indicators that we have used to isolate uh, negative human recognition, which is violence, humiliation, and lack of autonomy or freedom. Coming back to the Malawi DHS, DHS data, we isolated for sure that up to 17% of women farmers are human recognition deprived and they have deprivation intensities of up to 43%. And there is higher negative human recognition levels for women from patrilineal lineages as compared to women in matrilineal um, lineages overall from this paper. Um, here, I just want to mention the special thanks to the professors and my mentors that supported this research, Professor De Vries uh, from the Technical University of Munich, Professor Dr. Buki Reda from the Bundeswehr Universität München, Dr. Chibu, and also my very, um, my awesome mentor, Dr. Tony Kassuman, who was the first person to postulate the theory of negative human recognition and its effect on, social, on economic development. We have also part for this topic um, of human recognition, several papers published. The first paper is the paper um, that we, I presented just now talking about the measuring, measuring human recognition for women in Malawi. We have a second paper which identifies human recognition deprived women using data from Malawi DHS and also data from Peru. And this in this paper, we're able to find that women that identify as human recognition deprived in both countries um, um, are either poor, for example, in Peru, or work as uh, uh, agriculture or women farmers in Malawi. Um, but we also are able to identify that women uh, that are with spouse or partners that have higher education level um, are less human recognition deprived um, as, a, as opposed to overall for both countries. But an interesting finding that we found also in identifying human recognition deprived women was that um, women's education really have no tangible or big influence in their level of deprivation or in their deprivation intensity. So the third paper, which is also out and but also under review at the moment is us examining the effect of negative human recognition on farmland access and child nutrition, especially in Malawi, when the household bargaining structure is under uh, is non-cooperative or um, basically a principal agent model. Then the last, uh, the fourth paper uses the primary data which we collected from the field in Malawi to um, explain our method of collecting data for uh, measuring human recognition deprivation for women in the field. And the last paper looks at the effect of human recognition and responsible land use behavior. We were able to isolate that women with higher human recognition um, have better land use behavior or have put in better land use behavior in their community and also have better or higher community participation uh, within their villages or where they come, they come from in Malawi. Um, these are the references that are quite relevant to the paper. Um, thank you very much for listening. And I think we would open overall for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rebele. Uh, it's been a very interesting presentation um, and I'm sure it's gonna be uh, triggering uh, a lot of uh, questions and, and uh, comments. Uh, to start with, with one of these comments, I just want to mention that uh, James Foster, who is also attending, uh, uh, following this presentation says, uh, congratulations for the presentation. Uh, it was a great presentation. He says, uh, uh, we say hello to, to, to James from, from OFI. Um, and there is one question from uh, Sabina, uh, I'm mentioning both because you are using this uh, method. And basically, Sabina uh, uh, is asking uh, regarding the weights that you use 
And basically, what is the uh, if if you could develop your 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 decisions uh, on assigning weights? Because it seems that um, uh, could you mention or, or justify or explain a bit more why the uh, weight attached to individual experience uh, is lower than the uh, weight uh, that is assigned for the perception of the partners in your uh, in, in your methodology. Uh, and from there on, we can continue with other type of questions. Uh, let me just anticipate a, a, a paper like this, which tries to measure uh, a, an important concept, uh, of course, raises many other questions. With, and because of that, we will have uh, questions regarding the empirical implementation. Uh, I will go into that later on. And then we have questions regarding the policy implications. And then we have other questions, more uh, conceptual uh, concept questions. Uh, but I will go uh, through these three uh, components uh, one by one in, in subsequent uh, um, uh, questions. So I, I will leave the floor to you to, to if you could uh, please uh, expand your explanation regarding the weights, uh, as Sabina mentioned. OK. Um... In uh, answering the question about the weights, um, the, within the domains or the, the domain weights were set to one third. So here we didn't, uh, in the original calculation, the first baseline, uh, we didn't set different weights for the different domains. Um, if I understood it correctly, um, Sabine is mentioning if there is a correlation or if the partner insists to know where you are versus direct experience of violence. So this in our classification are two different things. The insist the insistence of knowing where a person is impinges on the on the person's freedom. And the direct experience of violence is a direct experience of violence. So overall uh, these two indicators are in two different domains, but the domains are weighted equally. We didn't have any var varying domain um, in the baseline where the domains are vary was when we wanted to test if we place more weights on one domain, so the soft domain, as opposed to the um, household domain, or more weight on the household domain as opposed to the self domain. I hope I answered the question. Thanks very much. Uh, there's another question, uh, and we will uh, move to the empirical um, questions. One is concerning the, the sample size. Uh, so does this size allows you to make disaggregations? And I, I'm going to go through two or three of these questions so that you could feel free to, to, to mix them if you feel like it's better. And then we have two interesting questions uh, from uh, Fanny. One of them is from our colleague Fanny and also from Omar. And both of them are uh, both of them refer to 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 the use of these three uh, waves of the DHAs, two, 2004, 2010, and 2015. Uh, and the question is, uh, were all the indicators available on on these three survey years? Yes, and they were. What did you do if one indicator was missing in one year or or, or not missing in 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 another year? Um, um, was asked from different sample. Yes, what, what happened if, if one question appeared in one, uh, it's, it's relevant for, or was applied for one sample and not for, for another sample. Uh, so could you please just mention how you harmonize or if you have any problems in harmonizing these three uh, waves. Uh, so it's, as you see, it's, it's a question regarding the, the data challenges uh, of implementing this over time. Yes, so um, we didn't have a, any missing question between the three waves. Um, that was quite uh, lucky. Um, and also when we did the application for the Peru data, we also did not have any missing indicator um, that was not already, um, that was not already uh, asked or a question that was not included from the previous um, data. So using all three, what we did here was a pulled cross section 
So all three, regardless of the time point, were viewed as one time point data because the respondents were different, so it could not never be a panel data. Um, but in other countries, I assume that there is a possibility that indicators are missing and makes it difficult a little bit to, um, to calculate the scoring for the women or for, for the individuals in this country. So um, in this case, um, there is really not so much other than using the indicators that are available and also to find if there are other indicators that can be used as a measure of, um, as a measure of uh, the concept of humiliation, violence, or lack of autonomy and freedom. Because in the end, the individual indicators, our list is not exhaustive of all indicators that can go in. Um, and if some indicators can be isolated as relevant to measuring negative human recognition, um, it's also it's acceptable to uh, include them. And then only I uh, say for this particular country, this was what was used. Um, and for this other country, this was what was used, so to say. Um, then the question about um, the question about uh, I can see the next question about uh, raising uh, having stronger human recognition among women in Malawi. How do we ra raise this? Um, I can maybe give a quick answer there, is a combination of the social norms, the institutional structures that are on ground, um, and more or less policies targeting such, uh, to, targeting the structures to push for change. So for example, in identifying in our second paper where we identified women that are um, human recognition deprived, we, we identified that improving the education of the women um, does not have a huge impact. It's improving the education of the partner or the men, so to say. So the, the recommendation is not to improve the education of the women, of course, they have to be improved. Um, but for this particular, um, this particular concept of development, more the other um, factor, which is the education of men, has a more impact or more magnitude of impact in improving human recognition for women as opposed to women's own recognition. Because in this case, also remember, they are recipients and the improving the, the education of the providers um, will reduce or hopefully curtail the level of negative provision uh, that they are or negative human recognition they are providing to the recipients, so to say. Great. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, yes, now that you've already answered this question that I had as a policy implication, uh, let me then refer to three questions, one of them from Sadia, and it, I think it refers to the external validity, let's put it this way. So could this be implemented in rural and urban areas, this, this index that you proposed? Also, Kelly, um, mention um, what would be the, the the challenges of expanding this index or applying this index to to other countries um for the rural and um, urban setting this is applicable because uh, overall the baseline indicators are there the main thing is if the questions are more or less the same they can be or the same they can be decomposed by rural urban just like region uh, they can be decomposed by region, by ethnicity, by district, by all layers and levels as you would prefer or as you would like it. Um, the, the next question, which was about... Um, the next question was uh, about the uh, empirical implementation internationally. And uh, let me add something to that, which is how would these indicators or the weights should be adjusted in different countries? For instance, uh, somebody is asking, Samuel is asking about the case of Peru, but I guess that we can expand this, uh, the, the, this question for a more uh, broad yes. uh, number of countries. Absolutely. So in our analysis, we applied the same, uh, the same weightings for the domains for Malawi and Peru. But of course, um, the, the entire methodology, and that's the beauty of the Akea Foster method, is you can generalize it to different countries, just like the MPI uh, is calculated this way. And uh, policymakers can place different weights. So depending on the domains they want to look at, 
Um, they can place different weights on the different domains, even also different weightings on the different individual indicators to emphasize um, to emphasize the, the impact of those indicators if they would like to focus on, on those indicators and also to target subgroup of people, especially for uh, policy uh, changes or for policy uh, programs that are more or less maybe budget constrained or uh, restricted to a certain um, setup, so to say. Thanks. Um, well, we have couple of questions regarding the disaggregation and it's in a way related to the first question, the second question, which is, so when you disaggregate, um, can you go further and show uh, standard errors, for instance? Um, what, because we, we, we did not see them in, in your presentation. Maybe you have them in the paper, but, um, and, and it would be, I think, interesting to, to see if, if these differences are statistically uh, uh, important. Do, do um, you do you compute the, the the standard errors or? Yes, they are available in the paper. So they they are at the they are not in the they are not in the presentation, uh, but they are available in the paper, and they are also uh, available for the paper on identify human recognition uh, for women in Malawi and Peru. So um, in the presentation, I only showed the disaggregation by domains um, because I wanted to show the impact of the contribution of each domain to the final um, uh, deprivation score. But um, this can, it can also be disaggregated by the individual indicators um, and the standard error calculator. This is not available in the presentation. Great. Uh, well, there's one important question, I, and it's, in a way it's related to, to the validation. So basically you, you have this concept, you follow this theory, you identify uh, three domains from which you identify indicators and a bunch of uh, methodological decisions. And then you come up with this uh, number that you can uh, disaggregate at different levels but then the question, there is one, one important question here, which is how do you validate this concept and these estimates? Is there a way to have uh, a, an external source of validation, some other concept that you could, or some other estimate that you could use to, to say, well, uh, the concept that I'm trying to measure is uh, in a way validated by this other measure that is related or is validated by this other type of uh, evidence, it could be qualitative or quantitative. Is there any way to, 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 to validate uh, these results and the distribution that you observe either geographically or by other categories as you showed in the presentation? Yeah, so um, as the concept is an intangible concept, um, it's quite difficult to validate to say objectively, um, this, this human recognition deprivation can be validated, for example, by education or income level or, or something like this. What we did was to, in the second paper, to see, okay, this, this index is calculated for women in Malawi, but it, is there significant differences between women in Malawi and women in Peru um, by, or by virtue of calculating this, indicators, this, this indicator for both of them. So we, in, the, in that paper, we wanted to see if they are comparable because of certain cultural or geographical um, differences that exist in these two different societies. Like I said, for Malawi, they have the patrilineal and matrilineal structure and Peru is maybe predominantly patrilineal. So what we did when we made the comparison was to identify that indeed there are certain socioeconomic and sociodemographic indicators that identify human recognition deprived women in Malawi and in Peru. For both countries, those indicators were significant and very, um, very high. Sometimes as other indicators show um, significance but heterogeneous effects. Some are positive and the others are negative, but there were a couple of indicators that identify really uh, in, in Peru, women that are human recognition deprived identified this way. In Malawi, it is this way. But overall, um, as this is a novel concept and this is the first uh, empirical application of trying to calculate 
this intangible concept. Um, I cannot 100% say you should validate it by comparing with education or comparing with income or comparing with um, some other um, objective or number based indicators that are available right now. Yes, yes, I see it's, it's, it's uh, complicated and basically because you are opening a, a, a path that has not been pretty much uh, advanced, uh, I understand this kind of complications. We have a couple of two extra questions are more in the concept grounds. Uh, one of them is if you could elaborate on the association between human recognition and multidimensional poverty. Uh, the other question, uh, it's also very interesting. Um, it concerns about the link between uh, human recognition and human development, because uh, this question basically is concerning about the, 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 the potential dual link between these two. Is it a cause or a consequence? human recognition of human development. And I think these are uh, challenging questions because are uh, falls in the ground of concepts, but it would be very interesting to, to, to know your, your reflection, on, on your, your thoughts on, 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 the, on those. So uh, wrapping up is association of uh, what's the link of human recognition and multidimensional poverty and human recognition and human development in terms of uh, if is this a cause or a consequence? Um, so for the first question, human recognition deprivation um, has been identified as one of the missing um, concepts of poverty. This is really the link um, of human development that um, most poverty measures are based on um, quantitative measures, income measures, but they do not capture other non-income concepts of poverty. So just like um, humiliation, dignity, um, ability to walk without shame, human recognition, deprivation, linked to poverty is really a, a much more holistic approach because if you truly want to measure poverty and of course human development, you would like to look at the quantitative aspect of poverty as well as the qualitative or intangible aspect of poverty. And this is how they are linked. The second link, linkage is here really to emphasize that um, two methodologies of measuring different aspects um, of poverty is not exactly needed. So if we would, if we would use the Acura Foster method to measure multidimensional poverty, why can't this methodology be used to measure an intang intangible concept of human development again? So um, it's to show the, the possibility of generalizing or raising this across uh, on the national level or across countries and how this is interwoven together uh, to have a holistic uh, view of human development. Then the second question, um, about the link between human recognition and human development, that it could be both a cause and a consequence. This is absolutely true because there is a feedback loop. So there's a bi-directional relationship. It can be a cause and also a consequence of human development. development. And of course it's instrumental, instrumental to human development. Um, and also in human development is instrumental to positive recognition provision within the society. So again, as the, the, the um, person that asked the question, of course, has described, per people that are deprived would experience misrecognition, which can lead to poverty. And poverty, people that are poor can be misrecognized, which can lead to deeper poverty. So it's really a vicious feedback loop especially when the deprivation level is uh, at a level where it is on the negative domain. So um, in the theory of human recognition and its impact of, on economic development uh, with the, from the paper from uh, Dr. Kasselman, he illustrates where the equilibrium level of human recognition, if it's above um, at the neutral and below in the negative domain can reinforce a 
sub equilibrium level where the cycle is vicious and the magnitude of positive recognition that has to come into the system has to be high enough such that this cycle is broken and the equilibrium level is forced to move. So um, I would really recommend this paper because then the theoretical framework is really broken down and explained uh, in a very detailed and a very interesting way. And it helps understand how the entire concept of human recognition and poverty can be a cycle that feeds into one another continuously. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Ebele. Um, this has been a very interesting uh, presentation. As you saw, there are many questions. Uh, we don't have more time to continue uh, on them, but you can find them in the in the chat if if you think uh, you could you would like to go uh, through them uh, for your personal work. And we thank all the participants to this um, presentation. Um, we have to go, uh, but just to conclude, um, thanks again, uh, Dr. Vele, and remind you that we have these seminars every week next week is going to be on october the 30 where we're going to have a very interesting presentation about catast catastrophic payments and multidimensional poverty with a longitudinal analysis where dr monica pinilla rocancio from universidad de los andes and of course a colleague from ofi will be uh, presenting a paper that she developed with dr paul rodriguez from universidad del rosario and I just want to conclude uh, expressing my gratitude to all of you for having uh, attending this presentation and Dr. <clears throat> Ebele again for this very enriching and illuminating discussion. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>